Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're taking a look at our PC build of the month. We're going to build this for somebody that's going from the free edition to the studio edition in a future upgrade, meaning it needs to work pretty well in both of those. To that end, I'm going to make sure I have at least eight cores, but the more the better, higher clock speed, even better. And I'm going to make sure that we've got a solid graphics card under it with at least eight gigabytes of video RAM. Now there's somebody screaming out there, John, yet again, you are an idiot. Why? Well, because there's new processors coming, there's new graphics cards coming, and you're telling people to buy this stuff. Hey, you know what? There's always new stuff coming. In this case, yeah, sure, we're getting near the end of the life cycle for these, but that means the price has dropped a bit. We also have some instances where people have to build. That's it. Uh, Aaron, over on the DaVinci Resolve Discord channel, Aaron specifically has been building for a church he's working with, and they can't just stop the sermons. No, this is their big push to go virtual due to the COVID work. And so... He needs, he needs to get it done. He can't just sit around and wait. Hey, church, hold off on those sermons for two months. All right. So in that, here's what I've built. It is specifically a 12-core processor from the Ryzen 3900X. I did this with an eye on the future. The more cores, it's going to continue to get more and more important to have more cores in your processor. Right now, I wanted something that had a higher clock speed. So between the 8-core processor and the 3700X that sits below this, which only goes up to, I think, 4.4 gigahertz. This one goes up to 4.6, which will matter somewhat uh, in the boosts because that allows a single thread to go that fast. And in some cases, single-threaded operations to get that fast would be a big deal. So in the motherboard, we're looking for something we can use in a future build. I'm not entirely ignoring the fact that there's new stuff coming out. This one will support the upcoming chips from AMD. So if we count all of the power delivery here, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. It's a 12 plus 2. That means 12 voltage regulation modules coming over here for the processor. And we've got two that are running the RAM bank. That's probably about the best you're going to get right now. And this is a very solid power delivery. That's kind of what I care about in a motherboard. Other than connectivity, having a USB-C, having a decent panel on the back in terms of Wi-Fi, etc. feature set, I'm worried about the power delivery, especially as we look at 12, 16-core chips. This one is going to do the deal with three M.2 slots as well. All right. So that's how I picked the motherboard. Even though it's one of the more expensive options, I think it's good for future use. Here in the memory, I went to the motherboard manufacturer here. I went into their support page, specifically looked at the compatibility from memory of the Matisse, that's the 3000 series processors, and here you can see all of the memory. What you're trying to identify, specifically what I'm looking for, is something that runs, in this case, the price performance is around, the breakpoint of, of kind of value to performance would be around 3600 megahertz RAM, which is just awesome. And now I'm looking for something that can run four banks. So this is run single stick, dual stick, and quad four sticks. And what I want to do is find something that can do that with a 16 gigabyte stick size. right? And what that allows me to do is put two sticks in for 32 gigabytes right now and come back later and upgrade to 64 if I want it. So this G skill is a good example of what I could run four sticks of RAM, 16 gigabytes each, total of 64 gigabytes now or later, but for budget reasons, I'm going to buy 32. That's two 16s right now, and 64 later. Somebody out there is asking me, hey, hey, John, wait, hold up. Go back to that motherboard. Yeah. You got four stick, uh, you got four DIMM slots that can fit this RAM. Why not put one in now, buy in as much as you can in one stick, then put another one, then another one, another one. Eventually, you could end up with, say, 128 gigabytes of memory. Well, this path from this processor, you'll notice it's clear on the PCB here. That's because this is the lone signal path between the DIMM slots and the processor. And the processor here uses this as temporary storage for computational items, and it needs direct access to it. Well, we've gotten smart over the years, and now we use dual channel memory, and that means that there are very specifically channels of memory access, two of them going to this DIMM bank. And if you put two in the right slots, if you put two memory sticks in here, you'll double the speed that you're able to access your items at because you're able to access both of them at once. Some chipsets offer quad-channel memory. That would be one per socket here. The AMD uh, 
on the AMD side, they've split that and made that a Threadripper specific capability. So dual channel is the best you're going to get. So the minimum we want to put in here is two sticks. If you want to get 16 gigabytes of RAM, buy two eights, stick them in the right slots, and you'll have faster access. That's why we're going to go with the RAM we're going to go with, which I found compatibility for in this T-Force Dark Z RAM. And it's also incredibly cheap, but right now 32 gigabytes will do the job. 860 Evo, this is going to be for our project drive, scratch drive. This one is going to be our NVMe drive for our OS and our DaVinci Resolve program. This will be for long-term storage. I do not want to work off this drive. I bought a 6 terabyte drive, 5400 RPMs. This is a slower spinning drive, but honestly, you're just going to be offloading footage to it and using it to then back up to the cloud or somewhere from that footage location. Here we've got an Asus GeForce RTX 2060 Super 8GB graphics card. This is about the cheapest graphics card that you can find with a 2060 Super chip in it and 8GB of video RAM. It's got a backplate on it, which is just a nice for looks. There's no RGB, there's no bling, you're not wasting money on that stuff. All you're doing is buying a solid cooler, you can see down here, uh, looks to have a complete heat sink under it that looks relatively thick. It's got two fans, which you're going to spin on top of it. Now, the way that this works, you have cooling for both the processor, which this would attach to right here in the middle, and the, the RAM that's on this board, the video RAM, the 8 gigabytes we've talked about, and the power delivery. So the cooling cools all of that. That's why it's spread out so much, but it's also spread out to dissipate the heat across the fin stack. There we go. So now we've got the graphics card. We're looking at a case. This is a case I haven't built in. I have built in their Dark Rock cases. Um, this is a pure base case. You can see one of the knocks against them in the past, while these things seriously have been quiet, one of the knocks has been airflow. One of the ways they can make it quiet is just to bottle it up, then temperatures go up inside. They've done a decent job in the past, but this one I'm optimistic is going to be a really good build experience because of the way they've designed their cases and I've worked with them in the past, but also... You can see it does still have some ample work uh, airflow. So this is a case that comes with three of these Silent Wings fans. These are high-quality fans. Excited about that. I think it's a good deal, and I think it's a, a solid case that we'll build in. Finally, I need a power supply to power this. 80 plus gold, that's an efficiency rating certification. Gold is kind of middle, middle of the pack, but it's also a good price point. Finally, it's a fully modular power supply. That means that all the cables that it has unplug from it. So you don't have all these cables tied in there, potentially having cables in there that you don't need just hanging out in your case because they're physically attached to the power supply. And that's our build for the month. So thanks for watching. This is the August 2020 build. This is what I would build if I had to build something today. Again, new chips on the way next couple of months. So maybe it's not a buy time unless you do like a deal because it will not be this cheap going forward. Thanks for watching. I've got a video coming up where I build a physical machine uh, with very similar specs to this. So if you're looking to learn how to build a computer, I will have an edit coming up for you in my next video. Make sure you subscribe to catch that. Otherwise, if you want to help me out and this has been helpful for you, click buy me a coffee in the link below. It gives you the option to buy me a coffee virtually, and I do appreciate it. That does help me buy more hardware for the channel and benchmark more work. Thanks for watching and have a great day.